Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, we check out those really cool modern retro Cannondales. There's some supremely cool helmet tech from Specialized that might save your life at some point. There's some new canyons yet again, more new stuff, some great entries for new lot as well. So first up, you might have seen this floating around on social media a bit, are the two new retro looking Cannondale FSI frame sets. Now they're both brand new frame sets, one in Viper Red, one in Team Blue, and they come with that really cool lefty Ocho fork, which of course is the left, left leg, single leg, single crown suspension fork. There's a mouthful for you. Now the first one on the screen now, I'm just gonna show you this. So this is Viper Red, and it's a bit of a nod to the Hedgehog equivalent from way back between 94 and 1997, as raced by characters like Frank Roman, Missy Jovi, uh, Miles Rockwell, the list is endless. There's loads of riders that have ridden on these sort of style looking Cannondales over the years. And the next one on screen is the Team Blue version with the yellow quad wrap graphics. So that's those characteristic yellow graphics on the down tube there. Uh, of course, they were the CAD 3, CAD 4, and CAD 5 frame set, so the super high-end version of that Viper Red option, available for 98 to 2002. Now, it didn't take a genius to work out that Cannondale are really gearing up for something big. They just recently released that new Habit, and then there's rumours of some new team riders joining them soon, and we know there's some other stuff in the pipeline. So this is just another piece of the puzzle for what's to come from Cannondale. But in the meantime, I just want to leave you with a few of these images on screen, because I think this is one of the coolest approaches to bringing back what, what Cannondale had in the golden years. They were like one of the most sought after teams to race for. Of course, that Hedgehog equipped bike was just such a sought after bike. Really, really quite a strange design back then when everyone was trying to master telescopic forks. Cannondale taking it all into the head tube there and having a regular fork down below. So it meant it was really stiff and it worked functionally amazing. Uh, of course, longevity wasn't the best point of those, but that new Ocho should be answering all of those issues that I had back in the day. As you can see from the press pack here that Cannondale has supplied us with, there are loads of cool retro pictures. Here's one of Tinker Juarez way back in the day racing one of these bikes. And of course, Tinker still races for them today. In fact, here's an Instagram post of his quite recently. This guy is a living legend. He was so in BMX before he came into mountain biking and he's still racing after all these years. Now these modern FSI bikes, uh, there's four sizes available in them. They're strictly limited editions. Once they're gone, you're not getting them again. So if you want one, you've got to snap them up now. Now there's four sizes, they're a bit more modernized, of course, than the retro equivalents. So across the small, medium, large, and extra large sizes, there's 380 to 460 millimeters reach. They're all 29 inch wheels. Um, Compatible, they're 69 degree head angle and a 73.1 effective seat angle. So really good for climbing. Now, of course, this is a high-tech, modernized cross-country bike. And I've got to say, I haven't wanted a bike as much as this in a long time. And this is strange because it's really, relatively speaking, just a hardtail. On last week's show, we took a quick look at that new Canyon Neuron. Of course, that's the 29-inch wheel, 130mm travel, all-mountain bike. Supposed to be a non-threatening bike, not like this new breed of 130mm attack bike. This is a realistic mountain bike for most mountain bikers. Now, one of the cool things about it is the fact in extra small and small sizes, it's got 27 and a half inch wheels and a medium through to extra large. It has the bigger 29s, basically just to fit what really works with that bike in a correct sizing. Now, this week we've just seen they've announced the new Neuron On, which is, of course is the e-bike version of the same platform. It has the Shimano Steps E8000 system on there with that typical 504 watt hour battery. And then there's various different models available, different specs, different price points, and there's a woman's version too. Now it's a really cool bike and it's basically the same format as the existing Neuron. It's just nice to see Canyon keep wheeling out new bikes. And just to note while also on the subject of Canyon is the fact they've updated the Dude. And the Dude of course was Blake's favorite bike of 2018, despite what he might tell other people. He didn't stop riding that thing, back flipping that thing. So Blake absolutely loved that bike and I know he's ordering another one for next season. So keep an eye out for some more fat bike craziness coming from Blake. Uh, next up is Propane. They're back in the news again. It seems they are relaunching one of their bikes every single week these days. Now the one they're launching this week is the Tai and the Tai All Mountain. Now the previous one they launched was the carbon fiber model. This is the back to basics aluminium model. 
But back to basics, not necessarily true because it's very updated, it's got loads of cool features on it. And I've got to say, this is one of the coolest looking trail bikes I've seen for a while. So have a look on screen now and you can see some of these amazing pictures. So there's a new geometry with longer reach, a steeper seat angle, which everyone is going to now for obvious reasons. It means you can get to the top to enjoy those descents quicker. Uh, so the, there's also the propane dirt shield, which is a double sealed bearing system, which of course for European riders especially, this is a big sell because we ride in the worst conditions really. Uh, the bearings have also been increased in size. So not only are they protected more than other brands, they're also much bigger to increase durability and reduce maintenance. Now, unlike the previous model, this one is now one by specific, so there's no going back to multiple chainrings. Although that said, I can't remember riding a bike with more than one chainring in recent years. Um, I pretty much devoted myself to one by a long time back, so I just couldn't be bothered with a hassle. So I'm quite pleased that more companies are doing the same thing. Of course, it's not gonna please everyone, but uh, hey-ho. Uh, so the front and rear triangle are redesigned, so there's increased stiffness and strength on those, and a new improved linkage layout. There's a better down tube protector on there. And they've now classed it in category five, so it's got full bike park approval, whereas I believe it was category four before, which meant, although it would happily handle that, they've got a bit of a get out clause if riders are gonna take them in bike parks and damage them. So there you go, go for your life and uh, hit up those runs. Now we've been hearing a lot of people singing the praises of that new GoPro Hero 7, mainly for the image stabilization that's built into it. Now, of course, in the past you had to rely on gimbals and things like that to get a really stable image. Now, I'm just gonna show you an image from Nino Schurter, which is taken, it looks like just outside Cape Town, maybe somewhere around Stellenbosch, out riding. This is filmed on the GoPro 7, mounted on a chesty on him. It's quite unbelievable. This is the stock footage that comes out of the camera with the stabilization switched on. Now I reckon this could spell an end to having to ride with gimbals and all sorts of other fancy stuff. What do you guys think? Do you think these things are the way to go? Let us know in those comments underneath. And the last thing we spotted this week is there's a new improved version of the Samurai Sword Out. Now this of course is the tire plug system that fits in and your handlebars designed by South African racer Stefan Sam. Now essentially one of the problems I have down there is this really aggressive terrain with big thorns and stuff so even tubeless tires really suffer at the hands of this. Now in races like the Cape Epic where you just want to just fix things and get going a tire plug is the best way of doing this. But in the past, Stefan had basically been taping on tire bungs onto cables and stuff on his bike. But of course, doing that, A, it's a bit dangerous with the installation tool because it's effectively a big forked prong that you stab into the tire. And B, the whole system relies on that worm of rubber being sticky. And of course, when it's exposed to dust and rain and other stuff, it's not going to stick into the tire as well. So instead of time consuming and finding ways to put it inside his backpack or any other part of the bike, put it on the end of the handlebar plugs and it's ready to load and stab straight into the tire. And these are the new impact proof ones. So the actual bar end plug itself won't get damaged or won't fall out if you fall off the bike and the bike is impacted on the end of the bars. And it's just a slightly improved system. So one end has the reaming tool and you can carry some spare rubber bungs in there, of course, to plug those tires. And the other end you load up ready for use. So it's really cool. You get a flat, literally get that reaming tool, ream out the hole, stab a bung straight in, if you need to, CO2 cartridge, up you go, and you're back racing again. Very cool product. All right, now it's time for Tech of the Week, and this week there's something I genuinely think could be a real game changer here from Specialized. It's a device called Angie, and it fits on any cycling helmet, and it costs in the UK about 40 quid, it's gonna be similar in US dollars. Now this thing could potentially be a lifesaver. So it's essentially an onboard transmitter and it can find out your location, it can map your ride real time if someone else wants to watch it, and it also informs people if you've had a crash. So it works in conjunction with their dedicated app on your phone, there's a subscription service for this, so just have a look on screen now and you can get an idea of what this tiny little thing can do. I think this is an absolutely amazing piece of kit, and I for one ride on my own quite a lot, so I'm definitely looking to invest in something like this. And I know that Neil's gonna be doing a lot of solo rides this year, so it, as well as being good for us, so we can see where he is and give him some support, I think it's a really good thing for his other half to have, and, and the same goes for anyone out there. If you ride on your own, I think this could be an absolute lifesaver. So it records ride data, it can be set to send messages to selected people that you're going for a ride, lets people know when you return from that ride, and you can be followed in real time. So that could also be handy for stage races so people can see where you are. 
So it's got a crash detector on it and it's also, also a safety beacon. So it alerts specific people that you set when you've had an accident. So essentially, if you have a crash, it figures out that you've had a crash and it's about to send an alert out from your phone to other people that you've had a crash. And basically, unless you tell the phone that you're okay, it does that. So if you're unconscious and you can't do that, of course, it's gonna be able to get you help in one way or another. And they're gonna be able to find out exactly where you are with GPS coordinates. So I think that's a really cool feature. Um, it works with popular apps like Strava. Uh, there aren't any other apps mentioned on a specialized website, but I think it's gonna be compatible with all the sort of popular ones out there. And it's a subscription-based service. I think this is absolutely amazing. Um, way to go specialized. And for doing this for such a nominal amount of money, I think that is an amazing piece of tech. Okay, and now it's time for Bike Cave, which is where we check out where you guys keep your bikes. It could be a garden shed, it could be a loft, it could literally anywhere you store your bikes, you work on your bikes, and you keep them safe. If you've got some cool places you keep your bikes, or maybe if you commute to work, you keep them there, anything like that, take some pictures and send them in. Upload a link is just at the bottom of the screen there. Fire them in and we'll chuck them on a the show next week. So first up this week is actually a workplace one. This is really cool. So this is from Re and in Lisbon, Portugal. Not exactly my bike cave, but where I keep my bike when I commute. I'm lucky enough to have, uh, lucky enough to work at a company that provides this space for us to keep the bikes. That's really cool actually. So you've got a dedicated locker system. Uh, see everyone's got the kit bags and stuff in there. And look at that genuine bike rack indoors. Now we're pretty lucky we've got bike racks like this. Ours are outdoors, we've got shower units in the building as well. And pretty much everyone that works here does ride into work at some point or another. So I love the fact that companies embrace this sort of thing. If everyone rode to work, I think the world would be a better place, wouldn't it, without being too hippie about it, but it makes a lot of sense. But yeah, this is really cool. Thanks for sending this one in, Rue. And I think actually, if anyone else rides to work and you've got a space like this, take some pictures. This is really cool. And I think it's also really good for other employers to see as well that people are doing this. Next up's from uh, Thomas in Sweden. Hey Doddy, here's my bike cave that I built from leftover wood only. I don't have a ton of space in the garage since it's mostly a gym, but I used the shelves that were already there and built onto those. Also notice the work stand that I made. It's basically a simple car bike carrier that I've attached to the workbench. Uh, it's removable if it gets in the way and enables, enables me to work on a bike and it didn't cost a thing. That's, that's actually a really good hack. I'm definitely into that. That's a great idea. I think that's even better than Blake's homemade work stand that he did the other day. I think this is, uh, in fact, yeah, it is, it's a lot better. Oh, and the bike. It's a very customized Scott scale. Uh, I realized straight away when I bought it that I like downhill and trail riding more than XC. So I've customized the scale with loads of stuff to make it mine. Uh, RockShox RL fork, uh, Recon, so 140. Yeah, okay, so you put a nice short stem on there. It does look more like a jump bike, I've got to say. But uh, I'm liking the fact you've got your pegboard at the back, a nice brick wall. All looks good with some uh, external conduit, some copper piping in there. So I guess your boiler's probably located in there too. And an old pair of suspension forks hanging up on the wall, bottle of cores, some lubes, all the good stuff in there. Nice to see, thank you for sending that in, Thomas. And oh, there we go, so there was the bike to start with. It's definitely looking better now, that's for sure. Okay, next up is from Mike in Mount Holly, North Carolina. My small utility room I made into my bike cave. Tools, cleaning products, a place to hang my helmets, backpacks. The intense is a custom painted project I'm working on, and the fork is a Pike 454 for my Santa Cruz, currently getting powder coated. The wheels on the wall are I9s for the intents. The more wood is my old downhill bike with custom powder coated RockShox totem. I've still got a totem, I found it the other day actually when I was in the process of moving house, being going through all the old stuff I have. Yeah, I've forgotten about those things. So in fact, I'm gonna bring it into the show everyone. So 40 mil stanchion, crazy piece of tech that was. Big old 1.5 steerer tube that, uh, well, 1.5 still not, didn't really stay around, did it? We kind of went to tape it after that. But good bike cave all the same. You've got a lot of bike riding packs there and a lot of empty pie glasses on that top shelf. I guess you can uh, make the most of those when you come in from a ride. So you've got a cool box down the bottom there. Nice setup there. A couple of trophies too. So it looks like you're into your racing. Some, oh, you've got a Mammoth Mountain number plate. That's the one. Always wanted to go to Mammoth Mountain and do the kamikaze. I think that's on my sort of little bucket list of things I have to tick off at some point. There is rumours of uh, doing a trip there with, with someone in this office, so you'll find out about that soon if that happens, because that will literally be insane if that happens. But uh, yeah, loving what you've done. Yeah, and your totem looks exactly the same as mine, the galvanised model, except mine's got loads of stickers all over it, predictably, for me. But looking good, dude, really nice. 
Okay, so we're out of the bike cave for this week, guys. So please continue to send them in. We love seeing what you have. Let's get a few more odd ones in there. Let's see some more work-based ones. If you commute to work, let's see your friend's bike caves, your local bike shops, in fact. Anyone wants to give a shout out to their bike shop, do it here. Take some pictures of their workshops and send them in. Okay, now it's time for Rewind, which of course is our retro section of the show. If you have anything retro at all, we're talking old photos of you racing a bike, any random bits of kit you've got lying around, perhaps a magazine collection, any stuff like that, take some shots of it and send it in to us. The link is right there at the bottom of the screen. That's our uploader link, super easy to use. Just make sure you tell us all about yourself and all about the things you're sending in. First up this week is from Diego in the USA. Hi, I'm a big fan. I got this bike free from a friend of mine. I don't know how, I don't know much about the bike. It rides really well for how old it is. It's still got some work to do, but rides like a champ. Uh, sorry for the bad camera quality. Dude, that doesn't matter. So it's a Cannondale Super V2000 free ride. That is a really cool bike. So Cannondale have been around for a long time. And that whole frame design originally was called Delta V. Then they made the Super Vs and I think they were Killer V hardtails. But they used to have single high pivots. This was a single low pivot. So this was really active when this design came out. And the fork on the front, that's essentially a lefty. Basically, that's where the lefty came from. So that is the, uh, I forget the model name now, it's a um, well, free ride fork, essentially. A twin crown, downhill style fork. But it was so stiff that one of the mechanics at some point was doing some work on one of the legs and the leg was off. And they're like, oh man, this thing's stiff enough to ride it on, on a single leg. And then basically that's where the idea for the lefty came from because that fork had the needle bearing system with the square internal legs just like a lefty does except it's got two legs and actually that fork itself is one of the most sought after thing by tandem riders because it's the stiffest fork um, i think it's probably the stiffest fork now even by today's standards although it's somewhat outdated because it was a 26 inch wheel fork however it's a pretty heavy duty bit of kit and if you literally pick up two of those forks you know what you've got on the front of that bike but uh, really nice to see this uh, 2000 free ride. So you've got an old Fox shock on there. It looks like a vanilla RC. The Coda Cranks, of course. In fact, Coda Cranks was uh, part of the Magic Motorcycle Company. I think uh, a brand that Cannondale worked closely with, and they basically developed BB30 between them. So that standard came from Cannondale. You have them to thank. Loads of cool stuff on there. Really nice to see. XTR rear derailleur on there. That looks like the second generation to me, so probably about... 97, 98. Uh, the first ones, of course, were more like 95. Um, get mixed up with model, model years, there's so many. Uh, it looks like you've got Sun Rhino Light rims on there. Uh, WTB tyres as well. Uh, can't see what they are, maybe Velociraptors. Maybe it's a bit early for that. Look at that stem though, flipping out, you go sailing with that. It's like a tiller. And you've got grip shifts on there too. Lovely bit of kit you got there. It's a really good bike, you should keep hold of that. And definitely it's well worth giving it a bit of uh, restoration love, quality bit of kit. Really nice to see Diego. Okay, next up is from Rowan, another classic actually. This is a specialized FSR from 1997. And really, if you look at the outline of them, they haven't really changed that much. They've still got a very similar back end on there. Still using that four bar system with a classic horse link on there. Of course, the shocks are way, way longer and they're placed in a better position these days. The frame design looked a bit more like a downer bike, I have to say back then on this particular one. And you've got, you've got what are they? So the Bomber Z, they are Z1s, aren't they? Confusing with the color. So obviously there must be an OEM one to come on that bike. Of course, Bomber Z1s are famous for being Bomber Orange rather than Luminous Green, but uh, looking nice, gotta say. And next up on Rewind isn't from anyone else. This is from a guy called Bike Ninja, who runs a store. And these are retro cards, so this one's orange themed, which is quite cool. Got to say the British bike brand. This is themed around a shark fin, which is kind of cool. Hans No Way Ray on a GT card, perhaps. There's loads of these things. There's Biopace, there's Yeti. There's another Yeti, that's got to be Missy Jovi. She always used to have her piranha around her neck. There's Klein, the Attitude, Kona, USE, yes. I was into MTB when it's called ATB. That's about my age, actually. There's a whole bunch of this stuff, so be sure to check out Bike Ninja if you're looking for cards, because they're pretty flipping cool in my eyes. 
All right, now it's time for Top Mods, which of course is the section of the show where we check out the modifications that you guys have done to your bicycles. All the stuff that you do to your bikes to make them a little bit different to your friends or a little bit different to the standard ones you see in the shops. Now this really, to me, is what mountain biking is all about. It's the little personal touches that really change your experience. That could just be a saddle and a pair of grips that really changes how the bike feels to you. Or it could be the whole hog doing a paint job and a full transmission overhaul. Whatever you're doing to your bikes, what you plan on doing, document it, take some photos and send them in. Once again, upload it there on the bottom of the screen. That's where you fire this stuff into. Just please don't forget to tell us all about yourselves because we've had some amazing entries recently and we've not been getting all the details. We can't really show them on the show if it's just some photos. We want to give props to you guys for all the cool stuff you're doing to your bike. So please continue to send them in and we'll fill you in next week. So first up this week is from Russell, uh, located in his kitchen, um, which is not finished, apparently. Um, so this is his complete eBay bike build frame. Uh, it's 2008 orange P7 frame. The wheels are for 2013 Carrera 26 inch with Continental Trail Kings on the back and a knobby nick on the front. 180 and 160 Shimano rotors on there. Uh, Shimano 1142 10 speed cassette, 32, uh, 32 snail, snail ring, you said there, uh, narrow wide. Rock Shocks Tora 302 fork, 40mm stem 180 bars, 180, I think probably 780, probably a typo there. Um, I love this bike, and it just goes to show what can happen on a budget of 150 quid. Do you know what? Uh, hats off to you for 150 quid, that is amazing. That's, that's a lot of perseverance going on eBay and bargaining for stuff like that. I think that's really cool. We've just done an eBay bike challenge here and we all had 100 quid to spend and I really struggled to get anything in the time limit I had. Um, Blake straight out cheated and got himself a, quite a lot more expensive bike with a little mate's rate attached to it from the uh, Isle of Wight from his favourite bike shop there. I uh, think they're called White Max. I uh, hope that's the name of them. If it is and you're watching guys, Wicked Shop and thanks for sorting Blake out because he won that challenge. Um, but yeah, I'm really impressed what you can do with, with 150 quid and a bit of scouring around. And that's definitely something I want to do on the tech channel soon. I want to show exactly how you can buy all this sort of stuff, what not to look for and what, what to look for if you're buying a frame, where to look for the cracks, all that sort of stuff, because you don't always want to be buying certain products secondhand. Other things lend themselves to secondhand market perfectly. And you've done amazingly well here, Russell. So well done on getting that bike together. I think you've done an amazing job. All right, so the next one for Top Mods, this is right up my street, and I think Jones over on EMBM would appreciate this too. This is his level sort of bodging. So the author is from Didac in Barcelona. Made some bar end taps out of wine bottle corks. Cheap, organic, and super light. If they fall out on the trail, you don't have to worry about leaving plastic there. Um, <laughs> so I win. And I've got to say, they look really cool as well, and much better than getting a core sample, which is actually, might sound a bit of a joke, but it's a really dangerous thing. So if you're riding and you haven't got bar and plugs, please put some bar and plugs on your bike because we've heard of some really nasty injuries happening to people in recent times and some young riders too that didn't really come out too well at the other side. So on a serious note, get bar and plugs and put them on your bike. And this is a fantastic way of doing cheap bar and plugs. So good work. Nice one, Didak. Nice bike as well, that ghost, looking sweet. Next up is from Wesley, um, location just at home. It's not very useful, is it? Nice to know exactly where you're from. You could just say UK or Germany or wherever. But uh, Doddy, this is my beloved single speed. I found this bike in a skip and I didn't want it to go away, so I picked it up and walked it home for some required TLC. I was only planning on washing and selling it for 20 bucks, but fell in love with it and saw lots of potential. I wanted to make something that would turn heads and trigger conversation with other mountain bikers, so I did. It was a geared bike when I picked it up, but the shifter and derailleur was broken, so I thought to myself, how can I make it work without spending too much money? Okay, so the modifications on here, paint stripped back to raw, pop riveted a spare cog from an old 10-speed cassette to the front as the emblem, nice, so head to badge, that's looking good. Angle grinded the derailleur cable mounts off so I'd not be tempted to go back to a geared bike. Wicked, so you turned it into single speed. Made some valve caps myself, drilled a hole in the dice and glued a plastic valve cap inside to do this. Replaced the square tapered bottom bracket with a Holotech and put an old pair of cranks on too. Tell you what, you've got a town on this and for a bike that cost you nothing and what you've got the result out of this, that looks absolutely amazing. Can't believe that's the same bike. That is awesome. That is what this part of the show is all about. Improving something, making it your own and ultimately 
If you're not spending a lot of money doing it, that is uh, the king of uh, top mods. Well done, dude. Thanks, Wesley, for sending that one in. Please, guys, continue to upgrade your bikes and do all those little things to them to make them yours. Don't forget, it doesn't have to mean buying new stuff. You could be upcycling and recycling stuff. You could just be like tweaking the setup on your things. That all counts as modification. So let us know what you're doing and send them in. So there we go, it's another weekly GMBN tech show in the back. Hopefully you enjoyed all the news. Let us know what was your favorite piece of news this week. And of course, if you wanna see a couple more tech related videos, click down here if you wanna check out the BMC four stroke. That is one of the most futuristic XC bikes ever. It's more like a four cross bike, really. Um, incredible piece of kit. And click up here if you wanna win a Park Tools work stand and a load of kit that goes with it. Really cool setup there. As always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. And if you love GMA Tech, give us a thumbs up.